Good evening. Welcome to the Scotch Plain Fanwood Board of Education regular public meeting, June 25th, 2020. Mrs. Saradaki, will you please call the roll? Uh, Mrs. Bauer? Here. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Boroff? Here. Mrs. Brody? Here. Mrs. Mitchell? Here. Mrs. Suryani? Here. Mrs. Williams? Mrs. Williams? Here. I had to unmute. Sorry. Here. Mrs. Winkler? Here. Mr. Murray? Here. Dr. Kulikowski? Here. Quorum is present. Thank you, Mrs. Saradaki. Please join me in the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic, republic for the same, one, one nation, nation under God, God individual, individual, with liberty with and justice, justice for all. For all. Yes, for all. Thank you, everyone. Okay, just prior to coming into this meeting, we had our executive session. And in the executive session, we discussed personnel, a legal update, and two HIB cases. Today, we have some additions to the agenda. We have three LET, an email regarding health source. We have four LET, suggestions for racial and cultural understanding in school. One BUS, which we'll be voting on for staff training. We have two addendums. Two BUS related services. It's an additional extended school year 20. Nine BUS, a COVID-19 transportation payment agreement. 15 BUS, Apple technology purchase, one BUS for 2021, the bid award for custodial supplies for 2021, information has been added. Two BUS, the bid for electrical supplies of 2021 and more information added. 18 BUS, related services for school year 2021, moved from two BUS 1920. 19 BUS, workplace and ambulatory medicine for medical services. 20 BUS, school physician. And 20 BUS 2021, disposal and sale of equipment. So the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Scotch Plains Family Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted on the Board of Education offices located at 512 Cedar Street, Scotch Plains, New Jersey. Such notice was provided in written notice and forwarded to the Star Ledger, the Times, the Township Clerk of Scotch Plains, and the Borough Clerk of Fanwood in the revised Annual Notice of Regularly Scheduled Meetings adopted on August 29, 2019. And this will be the first of three public comments. So if you would like to call in to make a public comment, please call 908-913-0709. In accordance with the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education Public Schools Bylaw 01640165, the meeting will be open for 15 minutes for public comments. There's a maximum of three minutes per speaker and speakers addressing the superintendent items business functions and other board business will be heard first. If time remains, speakers may address other matters. So if you would like to call in to make a public comment, please call 908-913-0709. And callers, when you do call in, please state your full name and the town in which you reside. 
Please note, board members cannot answer questions regarding concerns of individual students or staff members. Such matters need to be addressed with the superintendent's office. Robin, do we have any callers? Hi, Dr. Kulikowski. There's no calls at this time. Okay. Um, well, there are two other opportunities for um, members to make public comments. So at this time, we'll close this portion and move on to the committee reports. Does anybody have a committee report? I have two of them. All right, Mrs. Brody, go right ahead. Okay. I will start with the finance committee report. We met on May 11th. Um, Adam Strugop was there with us. He uh, review, He gave us a review of a plan for purchasing one-on-one -on -one equipment for the students in the upcoming year. And this, this is necessary due to sanitary reasons for the children not sharing computers at school. And he went over different plans and the costs ranged from 1.2 million to 1.7 million. The board had some questions regarding the type of computers being used and Adam was revising the plan, which I believe is on the agenda for tonight. Um, also, we discussed um, asking for a motion to pay to for the pay to play sports of volleyball since they were unable to, to play during the spring 2020 season, they were unable to get enough money um, to cover the coaches because there was no participation fee. And um, so we agreed that we would pay for the coaches for the 2020 season and that the boys volleyball team will be extended for one year for the paid to play status. Uh, we discussed the proration of the uh, aid in lieu of transportation. It normally is $1,000 for 10 months, paid twice a year, and it was proposed the second payment would be only $150. We discussed the reimbursement of some money paid for the subscription busing because the students were not transported, and it's based on $625 a year. So a three-and-a-half-month refund is $218.75. And additionally, we discussed the, a preschool tuition reduction and refund. Um, if necessary, it's based on $330 per month, which is $3,300 annually, and charging $330 per month for six months and $165 per month for four months, making it $2,640 annually. And we recommend all of the above. Um, and that's it for that. Any questions on the finance committee meeting? Could you remind me the date of that meeting, please, Mrs. Brody? Oh, I said 5 5.11. It wasn't 5.11. It was 6.15. Sorry. Okay. Six, six, <laughs> six. My mistake. Okay. I thought 5 sounded yeah. a bit odd. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that was wrong. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Your other meeting then? Okay. That This is our, our sub uh, our subset of the finance committee meeting. This is our SPF partners finance meeting in attendance was myself, um, Evan Murray, Almira Bella, the township manager for Scotch Plains, Mayor Colleen Marr from, from Fanwood, Borough Administrator Fra Fred Tompkins from Fanwood, Mrs. Sarah Dackey and Dr. Joan Mast. Um, we've been continuing this meeting every two weeks and it's been very successful. Fanwood discussed that they cut their budget by $100,000 from their previous version. And some factors that enabled them to do that was that the library had been closed and they've had retirees. Um, the county taxes had gone down. Um, the day we had the meeting, which was on 619, was the last day of school. And Dr. Mass had attended the five elementary school clapouts, and she described it as good energy and was happy the faculty was able to be there, which made it very special for the kids. And the middle schools had done a great job with their recognitions as well. We discussed the plans for the car parade, which was fabulous, and um, about giving notice to Scotch Plains and Fanwood residents. Both chiefs had the roots and Officer Brown had helped coordinate the, the parade. We also discussed July 8th as our planned outdoor graduation, with July 9th being the rain date. Um, planning as far as next year will we'll start almost immediately with no guidance from the state at this point, at the point of the meeting, and they are taking all scenarios into consideration doing that. Mrs. Saradaki discussed 
discuss the CARES grant and this money will be used for sanitation supplies and training for COVID. They plan on having hand sanitizers placed in every classroom and the expected cost is $20 per month to uh, keep that stocked and the they're going to use this money for that and the allocation of funds is based on title one funding and we're expected to get around seventy thousand dollars union county towns are also in the process of submitting their care grants to the county now tax collections in both towns have reported to be on par from last year scotch plains has limited the, all of their spending to essential only so they can handle any contingencies. We discussed the truth and racial healing listening session that would had just happened before our meeting. And the question was asked if we were waiting until the creation of the strategic plan to implement any of these programs that we discussed. And, and um, Dr. Mass had explained that we currently have ongoing programs and made a commitment to focus on these issues consistently and systematically. And for instance, um, in our hiring practice and our professional development. And we expressed that we, all of us learned a lot from the listening session and really greatly appreciated the students who spoke. And we as a board, we take it very seriously and will continue to put initiatives into place to address those issues that the students discussed. Um, and the school, the SPF school district has per participated in the National Truth and Racial Healing Conference and have already put initiatives into place and ba into place based on the action plan that they submitted. And we will continue to keep leaning in and listening and be more important and more importantly, be proactive. And that we love these conversations and we want to give people opportunity to share and understand where other people are coming from. And uh, surveys had been sent out to parents and the administrators had and they had received a wide ra range of feedback, such as keeping kids accountable if we go have to go back into remote learning. And our next meeting um, could be July 2nd, but it's working, it could be changed to July 1st. And that is it. Thank you, Mr. Brody, any questions? Thanks, Deb. I just wanted to add that, you know, these meetings have been very productive. I feel as though, you know, we started these meetings. We actually had one um, with each entity late last year, and they've um, progressed into more continual meetings between each entity to make sure that we're sharing and working together, um, mm -hmm. you know, across the board and that, the, you know, each entity understands what the other is doing and, and, and where the um, concerns may be, may be, may be coming from. So, um, you know, we've continued to have these every two weeks and they've been very productive. They initially started out, um, in, in the March, April, in March timeframe to talk about the COVID issue specifically, but right. they've definitely, you know, spawned into other topics within the communities, which I think has been fantastic, which is going to help when we, you know, start moving into the strategic planning stage, um, for the next several years. So, um, I'm just thankful that, you know, each of the different entities are, are working um, very well together um, and have been have really shared and been transparent with each other, um, which has been very helpful. Yes, it's been very collaborative. You know, it's been very good. Deb, can I ask you, uh, it's, so it seems like your meetings are going to proceed um, regularly and consistently over the summer. Is that the case? Um. We yeah I I believe as much as we can yes um okay. yeah so you'll, you'll still update us even though there are no public meetings to report out sure yeah I would okay. still do reports and send them out to you thank you you're Appreciate welcome it. anyone else for Mrs Brody okay well, thank you Miss Brody thank Great. you does anybody else have any reports to present I have a facilities report. Sure, go ahead, Mr. Murray. <clears throat> so uh, we had our facilities committee meeting um, on June 15th, same day as uh, finance. We spoke of four different items, only one of which um, is being recommended um, to move forward. Uh, the first was just uh, the discussion and evaluation around the purchase of hand sanitizing solution for the dispensers <laughs> for every classroom. So the approximate cost estimate was around $20,000. Um, there would be no cost for the dispensers, and I think the need is approximately 500 for the district. 
Um, the second was evaluating the purchasing of masks, masks for each employee and student. Um, it would be approximately two masks for each student or employee. That's just one of the things that the district is evaluating, whether or not that's the direction. But additional guidance is obviously needed from the state to determine whether or not masks or face shields or, you know, what the what's going to be the recommended um, protocol. Um, so we just discussed what the number would look like um, if we had to do just masks at an average cost of, you know, $10. It would probably cost the district over $100,000. Um, but like I said, this is just exploratory. We're just trying to research different options until we have more state guidance. We'd, uh, you know, obviously a decision would be made then. <clears throat> the third item we talked about was just a change order for the culinary arts classroom, which has been under uh, renovation. The first was for um, casework for two garbage cans. The second was for just moving up, moving of an electrical feed to accommodate um, the 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 upgrade to that to that classroom with the the new setup. Um, so we, we felt that um, we're recommending that the board approve those two change orders. And then the last, we just talked about the summer projects that have uh, that we're moving forward on, some of which have already started, obviously, because um, we're able to start those projects. The state had recommended we have to pay those contracts to continue that work. So we had been continuing that work while there was nobody in the buildings or on the facility. So that work already started prior to the summer. Um, and a lot of it is, is, is well on its way. So the first being the Brunner gym, which everybody's familiar with. Um, the second was the masonry repair at Park Middle School, um, which um, people who have driven by park will see all the scaffolding up. And you'll also see that it, it, it'll also say, I think the plaque says uh, Scotch Plains High School behind, because I think that was originally the high school. So that, that will be um, maintained um, as a part of the, the historics of the building. The third is the culinary arts classroom at the high school, which we, we touched on. And the last is the field lighting at the high school. So those are the four big projects. Those are all underway and those are all been, um, you know, worked on at some point started between, you know, then and now, um, and have all been um, making pretty good progress. So that concludes my facilities report. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Any questions for Mr. Murray? Hey, I have a quick one. Yeah, hey, uh, the Field lighting, do we have an estimate on when that's going to be complete? I think based on the original estimate, um, the completion date was expected to be prior to August Ooh. or at the beginning of August, I think is the kind of the approximate, but I, that's all dependent upon progress, right, Deb? Yeah, it's all dependent upon the shipping of the materials from Moscow, um, but we're anticipating by, the hope is by mid-August, if football goes back, um, that it'll be complete. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, so soccer should be, um, you know, those fields should be able to use them if if all if all if all goes um, according to you know scheduling. But we're we're ahead of schedule because I think the expected start was going to be after graduation, which um, you know. So that delayed it, that, that would have delayed us a little bit, but. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Murray. Are there any other committee reports to be heard? Okay, seeing none, we'll move along. Letters to the board. One LET is an email to the Board of Education dated June 11th, 2020 from Alyssa Flynn regarding high school graduation plans and Dr. Mast has spoken to the parent. Two LET is an email to the Board of Education dated June 16th, 2020 from Jennifer DiMatteo regarding schools opening in September. Three LET a sales email to the Board of Education dated Monday, June 22nd from Health Source Group regarding their services. I think that was about um, custom made masks that could have our school logo or something on them. For LET, an email from Mike O. Washington with suggestions for racial, racial and cultural understanding in schools. And I know I did respond to him as well to let him know we got his letter. Um, Dr. Mast, didn't we, we had several letters um, at our last meeting. Um, 
um, from from people again talking about graduation and talking about the truth and racial healing. Um, was there anything we had to follow up about any letters? Um, unmute. Someday I'll get it. Um, thank you. I wanted to follow up on the the email from August Ruggiero, who oh, okay. who had proposed um, a plan to reopen the school in phases that everyone reviewed. Um, I, I know that um, you know his, his his plan was very concise, and it ha holds many of the tenants that certainly we, along with other um, districts in New Jersey, would consider. Um, one point that I really appreciate it is that he suggests that we capitalize on the use of technology. We, we have just in coming out of our at-home learning experience, we recognize that teachers can extend instruction through technology and students can also extend the classroom to home or wherever they are if, if they have a device. And um, you know, in, in this three, the past three months, we have um, identified some best practices and we have recognized that we can differentiate instruction. So we, we do want to um, keep that as part of our plan moving forward. Um, whether we, we go back in a traditional way, we still want to leverage the, the power of technology. And um, he also suggested if, if we have to open in a non-traditional way, that we need to be very thoughtful on how we bring students back. And in some cases, he focused on the age of the student as well as their, their, um, their needs. So for example, if we identified students who we knew were skills fragile, we could bring them back so they could have you know, the, the live real-time um, experience with teachers where interventions could be um, you know, monitored very carefully on, on site for example. And um, the, the third point that I just want to highlight is we recognize that we're waiting for guidance from, from the state or even just the, the national um, health centers on, on opening. But as we do make our decisions, it's, it's, very, it's very important to have voices of um, the community and um, you know all of the stakeholders, our community members, our parents, our, our, our faculties to, to have input. So, so we just have the best ideas coming towards us before we finalize our plan. So um, it's certainly something that we're, we're thinking about. I, I know uh, Mrs. Sarah Dackey and I had um, a, a brief conversation earlier tonight that Fairfield County in Virginia just, just published their, their opening plan because of course some of the, the schools that are south of us are opening you know, traditionally sooner. So their, their plans are actually in place and we, we will both be able to see how it goes for them in opening and we'll also be able to um, you know, s steal their best ideas. But I'd like to tell Mr. Ruggieri that some of his ideas that he's presented can be seen in that Fairfield County plan. So. So I just wanted to follow up in more detail with the board um, on, on that plan. Well, thank you, Dr. Mass. I appreciate your following up on those letters. Okay. Moving along to the superintendent's report, Dr. Mass again. Thank you. So the superintendent's report tonight, the first five items we voted on last week. So I'm going to move on to 6S, which is um, the biannual gifts to the schools report. I would like to move that the Board of Education acknowledges receipts for the 2020 biannual gifts to the following schools, the high school, McGinn, and the high school rep theater. So moved, Winkler. Second, Brody. Okay, any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Seven S is the approval of the annual re review of code of conduct. So I would like to move that the Board of Education approves the annual code of conduct 
as reviewed by the administrative team for the 2020-2021 school year. So moved. Evan. Second, Bora. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. And finally, 8S, I would like to move that the board in cases where action must be taken within the school system, including the hiring of personnel, while the board is on recess, the superintendent is authorized and shall be expected to act. The superintendent's decision shall be subject to review and approval when appropriate, when appropriate by the board, and it is the superintendent's duty to inform the board promptly of such action. So, so moved. Winkler. Second, Murray. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Dr. Master, personnel next. Thank you. Um, I would like to move that the board approve the superintendent's recommendation for personnel. Um, that we discussed this evening regarding change of status, leave of absence, job descriptions, auxiliary employment. So moved. Second, Murray. Any questions or comments? Mrs. Sarajaki, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Brody? Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Murray? Yes. Mrs. Bauer? Yes. Mrs. Boroff? Yes. Mrs. Mitchell? Yes. Mrs. Suriani? Yes. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Mrs. Winkler? Yes. Dr. Kulikowski? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Mrs. Saradaki. Thank you, Dr. Mast. The, the additional item on personnel we already voted on regarding the appointment of board officials that was approved on June 11th. Okay, well, thank you, Dr. Mance. Okay, moving on, this is our second public comment portion. And if you would like to make a public comment, please call 908-913-0709. And in accordance with the Scotch Plains Fanwood Public Schools bylaws 0164-0165, the meeting will be open for 15 minutes for public comments with a maximum of three minutes per speaker. Speakers addressing the superintendent items, business function, and other board business will be heard first. If time remains, speakers may address other matters. If you would like to call in to make a public comment, please dial 908-913-0709. And callers, please state your full name and the town in which you reside. Robin, do we have any callers at this time? My name is Alphonse Aikens. Hold on, Mr. Aikens. Hi, Dr. Kolakowski. Sure. I do. Okay. Mr. Aikens, would you say your full name and your address, please? Hi, my name is Alphonse Aikens, 1395 Raritan Road. Thank you. You can proceed with your comment. So the question that I have for the board is, uh, what are your plans in including the uh, improving the uh, minority teachers higher in your strategic plan? How, how are you guys working with the uh, superintendent on that plan? And where does that plan stand now? Thank you. Thank you for calling. Mr. Aikens. Dr. Mast. Yeah, I, I would like to make a brief comment on that. Um, Mr. Patuka in HR can can speak specifically to um, things that we want to, to do to, to really sharpen our focus on diversifying our staff. Um, it, it, is, it is something that um, we recognize is important that for, for our students that they, they have teachers who, who, who look like them. Um, we also have um, 
a strategic plan coming up in the fall. And but this is by no means to, to postpone that we're waiting to do this work. But I, I am pretty certain that one of the main goals that our board is going to be interested in focusing on is just an equity and inclusion goal. And in that, I think this, this specific topic that you bring up, how to hire a more diversified staff, could very specifically be a goal that, that emerges from that. And that would um, give us the opportunity to, to um, re really create measurable outcomes where we, we measure where we are now. And at the end of the strategic plan, we, we measure where we are then. So it would, it would also, our strategic plan is something we report out on annually where, where we, um, we, we communicate the progress both the actions that we've taken and the progress that we've made. So, Dr. Mast, aren't we going to be doing our strategic planning starting again this fall? That's right. Great. So maybe Mr. Atkins can be part of that collaborative when we start doing that. Madam right. President, real quick. Mrs. Bell had her hand up first. Oh. Can I have her please? And then you, Mr. Murray. Oh, <laughs> um, I just wanted to say that this real, um, we're obviously definitely not where we need to be, but this is not a new goal or for the board or for the school district. Um, I, I know that the, um, our HR director uh, and administrators, ha I have a, a wear another hat working in higher ed in teacher preparation. And I know that they have gone to a number of schools, including uh, I happen to work at William Patterson University. It's the most diverse university in the state aside from Jersey City. And so I know that they're making an effort to reach out um, in different ways to um, attract as many um, minority teacher candidates um, and I know that there was a team from Scotch Plains that participated in a statewide conference last year on diversifying the teacher workforce um, that was co-sponsored with all the teacher ed programs in the state, along with the uh, Department of Education, NJDOE. And it was not only for recruitment of um, minority teachers uh, and administrators, but also retention. So it dealt with a lot of other issues uh, to make sure that the school environments are ones in which minority um, faculty want to remain and feel like they have a voice. And I think when we have the strategic planning in the fall, it will be um, really helpful. One of the things that um, maybe I'll suggest in small groups I'm in is uh, what's really needed is um, more work at the high school levels, interesting students in going into teacher preparation because there is a real uh, need uh, just in general and certainly for minority candidates. So I know many of the universities are working very hard in this area. They've been doing a lot and working in a lot of uh, school districts trying to uh, promote people to go in teacher ed. In general, the number of student of um, young people going into teacher ed is down about 40%. Um, and uh, so um, hopefully uh, we can do our part and encourage uh, outstanding candidates to go into teacher education. Thank you, Mrs. Bauer. Mr. Murray? I, I just thought it would be helpful if if um, Dr. Master or someone could just give the public an overview of the strategic planning session process, because I, I just feel as though the community may not understand that we want the community participation, we want people to attend, and we want their ideas there, and it's open for everyone um, in both Scotch Plains and Fanwood to attend. And we, typically, we do have a, a very good turnout, but you know, I, I just think, I don't know that people really know that when it is, and, and I know we may not have a date right now, but that, that it is, it's encouraged that residents attend and participate and share because that's what helps develop and ideas come out of that. So I just thought it might be helpful just to, you know, I don't know if there's any more to add or not, but Dr. Mass, maybe something you could just touch on. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I think just in looking back at our two last strategic plans, um, they have been 
um, for the duration of three years. And what happens is there is an outreach for all community members um, and all, all who are interested in, in our schools to, to participate. And it really is a, a, a goal set. It, for, first, it establishes priorities. And then with the priorities, it, it establishes goals and, and measurable outcomes. And um, the, the strategic plan is, is really a, a collaborative process that um, you know, then turns into really a roadmap for the district work for the next three years. So we don't have a date yet, but we, we will in the, the fall. Um, and when we do, we will, we will make sure that it is, it is advertised in, um, you know, in, in many forms so, so people will know. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Thank you, Dr. Mast. Mrs. Bauer, you've got your hand up again. I just wanted to say one other thing to tag on to what uh, Mr. Murray said, and that is that we also really uh, want to have students there. We've had students in the past, and student voice is really important and critical uh, in the strategic planning process. So re when Mr. Murray says residents, that's a very global. <laughs> that's all ages and, you know, all perspectives. Thank you, Mrs. Bauer. Hey, thank you for your call, Mr. A Alphonse Akins. I appreciate it. Are there any more calls, Robin? Dr. Kul Kulikowski, I have one more call if you give me a moment. Sure. There's someone at my window. Perfect. Go ahead. Hi, good evening. My name is Laura Benoit, and I'm a resident in Scotch Plain. Um, so I have three questions. One, um, I commend, I guess, the board for reaching out to parents and recognizing that there's more work to be done with regard to the hiring process. And um, we can't wait to hear more about the strategic planning committee so that we could take part um, and, and help with the process. But from what I was hearing, the strategic planning committee is starting up again, possibly in the fall. So one of my questions is in the short term, you know, what is the plan? Like, are, is the district currently have open positions um, that they're looking to fill? And if they are, if they do, what is the process in terms of trying to create uh, opportunity for my more diverse candidates? My second question is with regard to the parent forum meeting that was held a couple of weeks ago. Um, I remember there were additional questions and the commentary was that the board was going to get back to the parents and list out responses to all the questions that were asked. And last but not least, also just in regard to overall transparency, is there uh, some data that can be provided helping parents to understand with the gifted and talented program what the demographic of that group is. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Um, Dr. Mass uh, or Peter about the hiring process again. Can either of you give a... Excuse me, Dr. Kulikowski. Someone is um, banging on my window and I'm very distracted right now. Can you just wait one second? Okay. Mr. Oh my goodness. Hello. I'm sorry. Okay. So the question from Ms. Laura here was about the hiring process and the strategic planning and transparency about gifted and talented and the questions from the parent presentation a few weeks ago, the follow-up questions. So can Peter or anyone give uh, hiring process question, uh, how to seek more diverse uh, hirees. 
sure I can speak a little bit to that if Dr. Mass wants me to. Um, every year, um, overall, we do a, we have a number of initiatives as far as hiring goes. As Mrs. Bauer mentioned, we go to a number of colleges in the state, and we also try to focus on colleges that are tend to be more diverse, such as Kane University, William Patterson University, Montclair State University, who all have um, undergrad minority percentages above 50% as far as their, their student base. We also go to Rutgers. We are starting to also recruit at historically black colleges. Unfortunately, this year was tough because a lot of things got canceled, but we were scheduled to go to Cheney University in Pennsylvania. Um, we do attend a statewide job fair called NewJerseySchoolJobs.com. And last year that was in Princeton and that attracted a number of diversity candidates. This year it was virtual where at the same time there were a good amount of uh, minority candidates. Um, we do advertise quarterly in the National Minority Update magazine and the Equal Opportunity Employment and Education. Um, and we try to be as intentional as, as possible and when administrators are calling in candidates for interviews, um, we do have an online system in addition to all of these other efforts that they um, interview a diverse pool of candidates. Thank you, Peter, I appreciate that. And then Dr. Miss, we were, she was asking about the follow-up questions from that parent meeting that was had, uh, parent forum, I think yeah. that was June, June 8th. Yes, uh, we, we are publishing the, those Q&As. We, we are working on it now. And I also heard the question about um, just the, the ratios or, or the, um, the enrollments in our Quest program, our Gifted and Talented program. Yes. And again, that again that, that, that's something that we have been working on. Um, and I, I would need to re review those specific numbers. But if you call my office, I, I, I would love to follow up that conversation with you. Thank you, Dr. Mast. And thank you for calling in, Laura. Dr. Kolakowski, if I may, I just wanna remind the public that there is currently no system for being placed on hold. So if people are trying to call in and there are other callers making their comments, uh, if they get a busy signal, they should just try back. Uh, I think that might be why there's some members of the public possibly having some frustration with the call-in system. Okay. And perhaps we should look at going back to the emailing of the questions in, and then that way, once we get to the public comment, the question can be read by the recorder, such as Robin Broadbent, and then we can address those emails. Because uh, sound is a little difficult. You know, there were, uh, you know, 14 or so of us, and there's some background noise and movement. And then when the caller calls in, it's a little difficult to hear the pronunciation of the name, et cetera. So we will take a look at that going forward. This is our last um, board meeting for this particular school year. So we come back in August, we can um, relook at how we take our public comment if we're not back in public by then. But thank you for those comments, uh, Doug. So Robin, are there any other callers now? Yes, Dr. Kulikowski, I do have another caller. Please bear with uh, me. That's fine. We're good. And please give your name and um, your address. Okay. Just let me know when. Now's good. No, no, no. Wait. Robin, could you make it louder? Plans are in the works in the short. Say it again. Speak slowly, please. Could you please repeat your name and town in which you reside, please? Oh, the call was lost. Give me one moment. Okay. Hello. Hi, Miss Evans. We lost your call. If you would start from the beginning, Miss Ev Nada Hello. Evans, with your address. Yes. Hi, this is Nada Evans at 1270 Terrell Road. I'm calling to find out what uh, short-term plans are there to promote more diversity and diverse education in the school starting in September. I understand there are certain things that do take longer, but there are certain steps that the schools can take, like uh, more directly addressing African American Heritage Month and Hispanic American Heritage Month and updating the uh, book selections or recommended readings. 
that can be done rather quickly. So what uh, what is in the plan uh, where children can now see themselves reflected in the curriculum and not have to wait several years for that to happen? I think Black History Month is in February and Hispanic okay, is also you in take your call spring. offline. Your answer is Oh, I do know if I, Karen, if I could say just as from the curriculum committee standpoint, because we did report out, um, that's a great question. And we did report out um, at the last meeting that some of the summer curriculum work is going to involve exactly that. Um, from the social studies perspective, it is going to involve a review of the elementary social studies curriculum and reviewing how we could increase the diversity um, of texts and learning um, in the elementary school social studies curriculum. We um, just learned about that from the social studies supervisor and we reported out on that um, from our last curriculum meeting. So that's one thing that is going to happen this summer in anticipation for the next school year. Great question. That is a great answer too, Ms. Soriani. That was Noelle Baxter for social studies. Okay, thank you for handling that. Mrs. Bauer. Uh, also in the curriculum committee, I have to say, I thought they were, um, it was a very impressive presentation about the variety of, um, of books uh, that students are, uh, a, a lot of changes and a lot of variety in the books that students are exposed to um, in the curriculum as well. I think um, there's no question that um, the, a lot of the text and materials that are out there do not look at, have a very, um, one, in many cases, one-sided view of history. And, uh, and certainly that, that needs to be supplemented. And, and I think that's part of the curriculum work that Mrs. Sirianni was referring to in terms of, of trying to review and look at, at all of that um, in a, in an especially intentional way. Yeah. And I think right now I'm on the TRHT committee too, as, the, as the board liaison, you know, we're doing a lot of listening right now. We're kind of in the listening phase and I know we don't have ample time to just sit and listen and, and we need to make changes. Um, but we are getting a lot of feedback from the students, you know, on, on, um, how we might, you know, um, teach history different, what what their preferences are in terms of, of coursework. So we definitely are listening to their voice. And I know that we plan to, you know, take that back and incorporate some of that. Um, there's no firm plan for that, right? They're still giving us a lot of feedback. So we just want to make sure we hear them. I just want, can I say one other thing? I also want to say that there, there are some projects and all where students have choice. And I know that um, uh, Scotch Plains had History Day students this year, and um, they did a performance. Uh, I believe the title was something like "Rapping, Rapping Against Social Injustice" or something. So I think the more we give voice to students um, in their choices too about what they want to learn about, things that they are in there that they have heard about, but they haven't maybe heard it, heard about it in school necessarily um, in, in the depth that they want to. Hopefully there are a lot of these project-based learning opportunities with student voice built in. Certainly that's our goal. Thank you both Mrs. Soriani and Mrs. Bauer for answering those questions. Thank you for your call, Mrs. Evans. Robin, do we have another caller? At this time, I don't have anyone on the line. Um, again, I have seen that some people did try and call while you were taking calls, um, while I was on the phone. Right. Holding okay. it up for you. So, so um, just a reminder, please, to for people to call back. Okay, and we do have one more public comment session coming up later in the agenda. So at this time, I'll close this portion and we'll move along. Thank you, Robin. Okay, next will be the business functions. Mrs. Saradaki. Yes, first I would like to uh, go through the 2019-20 business functions. We, okay. uh, one BUS, we have some additional staff training on the report dated June 25th, 2020. Two BUS, we have additional uh, related services uh, that's for Susan Mendelson uh, for social skills. 
Then if you, three BUS and four BUS were approved on June 11th. Five BUS is a transfer of current year surplus to reserve. That just is not, that is not our current plan, but that just keeps that option open if something changes in between now and when the audit is completed. Um, six BUS, I'm asking the board to acknowledge receipt of the board's secretary report, the treasurer school fund report and budget adjustments for the month of May, 2020. Seven BUS, I'm asking the board to acknowledge receipt of various disbursement listings for the month of May, 2020. Eight BUS, I'm asking for the board to approve the bills for the period May 27th through June 22nd, 2020, in the amount of $3,858,689.51. Nine BUS, I'm asking for the board to approve transportation payment agreement with Amaker and Porterfield. They have, um, I've been uh, talking to um, actually her lawyer because she doesn't understand this whole process, but um, she is willing to accept 65% of the payment for the period mid-March through the end of the year. And Union County Ed Services is still working on and we're gonna hold out a little bit in case they come out with a better offer than 65%. But right now they are, uh, they feel that they can get an agreement of 65% from their bus companies for us to pay it for the period of March 16th through June 30th. This is a period of time when all of the drivers were on unemployment and, um, so, and they didn't have any fuel costs associated with us, but they still had to maintain their office staff and their lease payments on their buses and things like that. 10 BUS, um, the pay to play boys volleyball. I'm asking the board to approve the volleyball team not paying for their coaches this year because they weren't able to fundraise. And they have agreed that they would stay in pay to play status if we approve this for an additional year. 11 BUS um, has to do with any anything related to COVID we're supposed to put on an agenda, even if it's not something that would normally require board approval. So for aid in lieu of transportation, I know that it was reported out of $150, but just this week the state finally came out with um, the payment that they're set, suggesting that be made and it be $167 for the second half of the year. Um, of course, many districts already had to have made this payment, so they're going to have to go back and pay the extra $17 to everybody. We were kind of holding out in case the state came out, so we'll be making a payment of 60, $167 to all the um, aid in lieu families per student. Subscription busing, as mentioned before, we're requesting that we refund $218.75 to each of the families who paid for subscription busing and preschool tuition. Uh, we are coordinating, uh, if they're three-year-olds, the families have a choice. They can use um, part of their balance that they have toward next year if they're planning to enroll. Otherwise, we're refunding the money, but it's all be worked out so that they would be paying half the tuition for the last four months. Building permits. I'm asking the board to approve the withdrawal of 21,790 from Capital Reserve for the building permits for the culinary arts classroom, the high school field lighting, and the Brenner Gym floor restoration. That's all payable to the township of Scotch Plains. 13 BUS, there's um, the school one project is finally closing out and I'm asking the board to approve. Um, it's actually not a change order. It's a change order in our favor. It's a return to capital reserve of $41,214.50 from the project. That's a combination of the general contingency allowance, which was not used and a reimbursement to us of the overtime where we had to staff because they hadn't completed the job on time. 14 BUS, um, we're returning $11,000, the contingency reserve again to capital reserve. 
15 BUS, I'm asking for the board to approve 1.5 million 500, uh, one point, I'm sorry, 1 million 500 $1,500 for the purchase of $3,500 iPads, including the rugged case and keyboard and Apple Care agreement. And that's it for 2019-20. So if there's any questions. We have a motion first. Okay. So moved. Evan. Second. Second. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, Amy. Uh, any questions or comments about those items, Mrs. Saradaki just discussed? I, I just have one thing to point of clarification on the technology purchase, because I think it's important to know that it wasn't, you know, there was other options explored as well. Um, some were significantly higher, um, but this this um, solution was a, was a, an accommodate was a the most effective as well as inventory wise, you know, every, everybody's fighting for the same thing. So it's a supply and demand thing as well, I believe. So I think, you know, some of the other solutions, there was limited supply of those um, technologies. So I think, you know, just this seems like it's a, a very good um, and it comes with the uh, Apple care program, which is um, considerably um, considering the, the, the use of these devices and any damage to them, they'll get covered. So I think that's a, it's a, it's a great end result for the district and it'll enable us to be able to give, um, I don't want to misspeak. So somebody correct me if I misspeak, but one-to-one -one devices for the students of the district. Dr. Mast. Just, just for more clarification from what Mr. Murray said that, um, you know, at this point that the district really, um, doesn't have a choice to not go to one-to-one -one because if we do come back as we hope we will in September um, to, to have students sharing devices, it would be very hard to, to disinfect them um, in, in between classes and usage. And in fact, the level of disinfection could, could damage the devices. So what we've done is we've repurposed our, our district inventory and we've reallocated those um, to, to different grade levels. And the purchase of the iPads that we're requesting here will um, give grade level initiatives of that technology. What we are excited about is it's really building upon the, the toolkit that we built in, um, in at-home learning with, with both the, the pedagogy of the teachers and also the learning of the students that everyone will have that device. We, we know that um, the, the iPad can do the, the Google Classroom that we've all become very familiar with, but in addition, it provides a creative tool for, for kids to show what they know in, in multiple ways by creating newsletters, by, by utilizing music, by, um, by, by making movies and voiceovers. And there, there's just a, a lot of tools that I know that the, the students will, will gravitate towards. So it's um, something that we, we feel like we're, we're being pushed to do at this time, but we found the, the most um, cost-effective solution and also something that's really going to bring our technology use to the next level in the district. So it's an exciting opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Mayas, Mrs. Borup, and then Mrs. Soriani. Thank you, um, and I, I think it's important, you know, to mention that um, my when we first were discussing it and it first came up, just the keyboards in general, I think, is a huge part of it. So when you say iPad, just reminding everyone that there's keyboards um, and um, also the part of the case that comes with it. And correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, but one thing I didn't ask, and I, I am curious about, is is there a, a, a manual a mouse that you can use, or that you can, or you're able to plug into a keyboard if you were to prefer to use one? Um, that's that's a good question. I, I know you could get all sorts of Bluetooth devices that would work with the iPad. So you could get you could get actually an inking pen, or you could get get a mouse. I hadn't thought about wireless mouse. Right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Boroff, Ms. Soriani. 
Yeah, I was just wondering, um, I know we've discussed this prior to, and I, I didn't think to ask, kind of what is the, the lifespan of the iPads? And as we need to start replacing them, do we get some sort of discounted rate or how does that work? That, that's, that's a really good point too. So in, in, the, um, in, in this current proposal, as Mr. Murray said, it comes with four years of Apple Care, which is really a guarantee for the device. So we're looking to, to give the students these devices and then they would have them for, they would have that device for four years. Um, the positive of an Apple device too, is it still has, um, it has a resale value afterwards that you could then put towards your next purchase where other, other technology devices do not. For example, um, the, the Chromebooks at the end of life, at the end of four years that they have very little resale value. Good point. Mrs. Saradaki? Uh, one thing I'd like to mention is that this is the cost this year, but this should not, unless something changes based on our current enrollment and our, um, <coughs> based on the current cost for the iPads, um, our annual investment will be much less than the 1.5 million. This is just what we need to get started with this initiative. Um, I also wanted to mention that the reason we're able to afford this is because we've saved a considerable amount in transportation this year and substitute costs um, and our SLEOs at our schools, the police officers at the schools. So those three things combined total almost a million dollars in savings. Um, in addition, we had a couple of employees that we did not hire this year that we budgeted for and also we had a couple of employees leave that we did not replace until uh, basically now for next year's school. Um, and so that gave us the funds uh, from our current budget to be able to spend on this. Thank you, Mrs. Saradaki. Thank you for your question, Ms. Soriani. Any other questions? Okay, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Moving forward with 2021, we have our bid award for custodial supplies and that goes to two different vendors. Um, portion of the bid went to Inco Incorporated and a par portion went to Cooper electrical supply for the custodial supplies. Um, for the electrical supplies in 2BUS, uh, Cooper Friedman electrical supply in the amount of $9,700. 3BUS, we have the bid award for the lease purchase. We did only have one um, bidder, uh, apparently according to our, our um, company that helps us th with bonds and bidding for the lease purchase and such. That's not unusual right now because a lot of these places aren't functioning the way they normally would uh, with people being at home and such. But she said it's the best interest rate she has seen so far. She said most of hers are coming in around 1.5 and they handle a lot of school districts and ours came in at 1.255. Apparently this will be the fourth year with US Bank Corp and apparently they very much like dealing with us. So that's a good thing. Uh, for BUS is the renewal of our facilities applications for 2021. And that's uh, essentially the same as it's been in the past years. Uh, it's for the modulars, the use of the temporary space, and uh, it's for, we have one classroom that's undersized at Brunner and the toilet facilities for pre-K and kindergarten that um, are in the hallway versus being in the classroom. 5BUS is the resolution to increase the bid threshold from 40,000 to, I think it was 44, yes, 44,000. And that's evaluated by the state every five years. So this would be the first increase in five years. 6BUS is uh, our system for our cafeteria point of service. And that's uh, for the maintenance and the software at $7,117.65. 
Seven BUS was approved at the last meeting. Eight BUS is our frontline renewals. And again, that's at 4.85%. Nine BUS is our systems 3000 renewals at 3%. 10 PU BUS is our professional services contract with Energy for America, and they increased 1%. 11 BUS is our uh, contract with the Union County Vote Tech Schools, and they have, again, not increased tuition for us at all. 12 BUS is all of our non-public uh, agreements with Union County Ed Services, as well as our special education students that we send there. and uh, professional services when we need professional services through Union County Ed Services. And thirteen yeah the next one is thirteen BUS is our E rate consultant. Um, and he has not increased in several years also. That's uh, consistent at $4,800 a year. Our insurance, it's reappointment of our insurance risk manager, Arthur J. Gallagher, and 15 BUS is the uh, reappointment of Centric Benefits Consulting and Edward Gunther. 16 BUS is the appointment of our architects of record. 17 BUS is appointment of our bond council who helps us with the um, lease purchase, annual lease purchase bid also. And they haven't changed in several years also, it's 4,000. Uh, 18 BUS is uh, related services for 2020, 2021. And you'll see there's quite a list. Yes. 19 BUS is the, I'd ask the board to approve Atlantic Health Systems, uh, Urgent and Specialty Care in Clark. This is not our school doctor, that's the next one. This is uh, when we have new employee physicals, CDL physicals. Um, people can go down there basically without an appointment. They get, their, get things taken care of more quickly if they have an appointment, but they have very good pricing for us and their services have been, um, I think, very good. Uh, but you'll see the list of general things they assist us with here. 20 BUS is the appointment of our school physician. Um, last year was her first year, and I believe she worked very well from what I understand, especially with um, Mrs. Rabimbus. And um, that's, uh, she has increased 2% to 27,540. Uh, 21 BUS, we have one more bus because we did buy a bus this year to dispose of. Um, and if the board approves, we'll be listing it on govdeals.com, which is a state approved site. And that is all I have for business for 2021. We have a motion. So moved, Prof. So and a second, Brody. Thank you. Any questions or comments about that grouping of items Mrs. Saridaki just discussed? I have a question. From Ms. Brody, go right ahead. Um, Mrs. Saridaki, what is the difference between the electrical supplies in the first motion and the second? Yet, yeah, Cooper has both electrical so supplies and custodial supplies. And so they did. Um, um, okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other question or comment? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Thank you, Mrs. Saradaki. So the balance are procedural, which are identical to last year. So I don't know if you need me to read through all of them. Uh, I think I did read through them last meeting. Yes. Um, so I don't know if you just want to vote on those. They're just, um, like I said, procedural. And there are no changes from last year. I'm just scrolling to see how many there were. 12. 12 procedurals. Does anybody have any um, 
question or comment of these 12 procedural items that were discussed at our last Board of Ed meeting? Seeing no one, then um, all those in favor? Oh, can we have a motion? So, so moved, moved, Brody. Thank you, Mrs. Brody, and a second? Bauer. Second, William. Thank you, Mrs. Bauer. Uh, since there were no questions or comments, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Thank you, Mrs. Saradak. Thank you. Okay, moving on to policies. Um, the approval of board policy that was postponed until August, that still stands. There's nothing else, Mrs. Winkler? Nothing else at this time. Thank, Thank you. you. Any new board business? Seeing none. Other board business, Re request to attend workshops or workshop reports. I have a few workshop reports. Go ahead, Mrs. Winkler. All right, on, let's start with the first one. I, on June 12th, I attended a school boards association workshop, Equity in a Pandemic, um, which was, uh, sponsored by the Educational Leadership Foundation. Um, this conversation, uh, it was sort of a panel of people speaking, um, uh, which included Willis Spicer and Diane Johnson and Larry Feinsod, Vince DeLucia and Brian Zakowski. Um, they talked about uh, how, how all districts are will need to affect meaningful change uh, within ourselves and our communities. Um, we let's see. They talked about um, leading with equity and not trying to clean it up afterwards. Um, let's see. Going through my notes quickly here. Um, they talked about. Uh, Let's see. Why do students not feel comfortable coming forward with issues um, of race and that it could be re-victimization? Um, let's see. Diversity doesn't mean a, a unified voice. It doesn't mean everyone embraces that diversity. Excellence in equity is not a cliche. There's real work to be done what structures are in place that marginalize people, ask minorities, talk with dropouts, those who didn't have a great experience, why, uh, survey to give everyone a voice. Um, they talked about catchphrases and buzzwords like future ready schools, uh, truly give children a personalized pathway and a voice. Um, uh, they talked about SEL is more than yoga and breathing. Uh, that there are competencies in SEL, self-awareness, who am I, how do I see the earth and, and why, um, understand other people's perspectives and re respect them, uh, like don't unfriend them on Facebook because they don't agree with you. Uh, sustainable Sustainability they talked about, um, equity and sustainability, food insecurity, um, healthcare and other issues. Uh, also, sustainability in relationships, mental health and wellness. When children have trouble sustaining good relationships, uh, they also often have emotional issues. And what are the pillars of a good relationship? They talked about kindness as an energy exchange between people. Um, they talked about uh, trying to see who else. Whoa. They talked about a bunch of different things. And then they had... Um, how do you keep your joy, uh, which is so necessary to do quality work, take time for reflection? Uh, what did I hear and what can I do? Um, uh, listening to hear and not just to respond. Um, uh, one of them talked about 
uh, what she referred to as weight. Why am I talking? How can schools be more equitable with honors and AP classes? They talked about eliminating midterms in order to, uh, to make a difference, that they found that some students um, didn't have time to study for their midterms uh, if they had to go to work after school and, um, and then did less well on their exams than the students who, uh, who had that time to use towards studying for those tests. Um, talked about right now is not the norm. Uh, if it's not inclusive, think outside the box or don't do it. Uh, why hasn't equity happened before? Um, they talked about the book White Fragility by Robin DiAngelo. Uh, looking to see what else was in here. Uh, conundrum of how to maintain safety and also provide the best educational opportunities and SEL skills. Looking quickly to see what else. I'm sorry, I don't mean to drag this out. Uh, talking about things becoming more virtual now and that students are starting at, you know, long term, students started to lose interest in virtual instruction. Uh, and questions about how to assess learning loss. Don't assume losses for specific groups. All right. Anyway, that's that's what I'll say about that one. Um, then there was on June sixteenth, uh, the school boards association had a women educators examining legacy shaping leadership, which uh, initially when I signed up for it, it said something about. Um, leading during a pandemic. So I, I was curious to see what they had to say. Um, the, some of the people on the committee were, um, were Willa Spicer and Ma Marie Adair and uh, Dr. Penelope Latimer. Um, it was an interesting panel discussion. Uh, I'm looking for what they said, keeping the mission and purpose in mind uh, to make things better, education and emotional and physical purposes, knowing and learning in a crisis, who to invite to the table, listen to professionals, draft a plan, enact recommendations, follow the program and regularly update it as necessary, have a passion, a mission and a purpose, impactful leadership, uh, all involved improve their craft and function at higher levels. Uh, there was some mention of the book Nuance by Michael Fullan. Talked about joint determination and adaptability and culture-based accountability. They talked about wishful thinking versus purposeful change. We talked about honoring dissent. You get a better product when you get dissenting viewpoints and work them in. Try to find and understand dissenting viewpoints. Maintaining integrity. Uh, following moral compass. While addressing equity and diversity, all children can and will learn. Uh, it is morally wrong to ask learners to demonstrate knowledge that they haven't been taught well. Uh, so make sure that they are being taught well. Uh, we don't learn from experts. We learn from reflecting on, ex we don't learn from experience. We learn from reflecting on experience was a quote from John Dewey that they mentioned. Um, they mentioned the book Leaders Eat Last by Simon Sinek. Gaining perspective, leading with impact and influence. Post critical conversations ongoing and in a meaningful way include multiple key stakeholders from the start. Listen with intent. Multiple perspectives make better decisions. And that's what I'll leave you with from that one. And then on June 18th, I attended the Restart Ed Medical Guidance for School Reopening. Uh, which was a panel discussion. 
um, as well. Um, they were asking about mask use. Some kids won't be able to wear the masks uh, due to their their individual um, their individual uh, traits. Other students and staff might be medically fragile. How are we going to address that? The CDC still hasn't given us definitive guidance. Um, in Washington State, some of the rural districts have one school nurse per school district, um, and obviously that's going to have to change. Um, they talked about losing the confidence of the community, unintended consequences, special needs and underserved communities, no access to therapy or lunches. Uh, why don't we have guidance? This is dangerous. Uh, they talked about masks and hand sanitizer uh, and staggered schedules possibly, cleaning high touch areas on a regular basis, how often and, and Developmental stages of kids will make a difference for whether they'll be able to wear the masks or not. Uh, whether we need to be training staff about PPE, do they need masks or face shields? Will, will uh, staff that are more at risk be required to have gowns and changes of clothing as necessary? Um, what about bus drivers and aides on the buses? Uh, what else? Not every community will be able to open with the same precautions based on uh, financial needs. Um, screening staff and students every day, uh, face coverings, hand washing. What else do they talk about? Basing this on symptoms, would there need to be an isolation room in every school? Uh, that mo most schools don't have the space for that, but you can't you can't put a child in in an unattended isolation room, but you can't be attending them if you're if you're possibly at risk. Um, and what about things like fever, which tends to be common with lots of different things, or signs of asthma and allergies? They could all be confused with COVID. Um, they talked about ventilation issues. Do we have to have positive air pressure in an isolation room? Um, they were saying that we're living in a traumatic event and that we need to respond to this crisis and address the social and emotional learning needs of our students. Um, they talked about school nurses providing mental health to our students. Is that something that's going to be possible? Um, I think they brought up a lot more questions than answers, but it was an interesting discussion to be a part of. Uh, community and collabor collaboration between parents, teachers, nurses, school administrators, pediatricians, contact tracers in the community are critical. Um, they talked about the basics of hand washing and masks. <laughs> Can't rely on medical technology that doesn't exist. Uh, it, it was an interesting discussion, but it, it obviously had a lot more questions than answers for what to do about these things. Well, you went to a lot of meetings. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions for Mrs. Winkler? Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Does anybody else have any reports? Okay, thank you. Then we'll move on to 2 OBB. And actually, I'll group all of these if that's okay. Uh, we have the adoption for res a resolution for negotiating our for the negotiating services, which is Rekasetta. We have three OBB, which is the appointment of the treasurer of school monies, Richard Barre. Four OBB is legal counsel for special education, which is with uh, currency and Hollenbach LLC for Nathaniel G. Simon Esquire. And that is 0% increase for 55000 And 5 OVB for our board attorney, the Bush Law Group, which is Doug Silvestro Esquire. And he is a retainer of $167 per hour from June 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021, at a cost, uh, annual cost of uh, $55,000, which is a 0% increase 
for his professional services. Anybody uh, would like to make a motion? So moved, Borov. And a second. Second, Winkler. Thank you, Mrs. Borov. Thank you, Mrs. Winkler. Any questions or comments about those items? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Thank you. And that brings us to the approval of the minutes. We've had four sets of minutes from two from May 12th for both the open agenda meeting, executive session, and the public's, public portion. And then two from May 28th, the regular board meeting, executive session, and then the open public meeting. So moved. Thank Mary. you, Mr. Murray. Second, Brody. Thank you, Mrs. Brody. Does anybody have any questions, comments? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. And this brings us to our third and final portion of public comment. So if you would like to make a public comment, please call 908-913-0709. In accordance with the Scotch Plains Fanwood Public Schools Bylaw 0164 and 0165, the meeting will be open for 15 minutes for public comments, maximum of three minutes per speaker. Speakers addressing the superintendent items, business functions, and other board business will be heard first. If time remains, speakers may address other matters. So if you'd like to call to make a public comment, please dial 908 913 0709. When you call, please state your full name and the town in which you reside. And again, board members cannot respond regarding concerns with individual students or staff members. Such matters should be addressed with the superintendent's office. So Robin, at this time, do we have any callers? Yes, Dr. Kulikowski, you do have a caller. Mr. Okay. Rogero, please speak loudly and clearly and state your name and your address. Okay. Ready right now? Yep. August Ruggiero, 316 Pearl Place, Scotch Plains. Thank you. You can go ahead and make your comment. Uh, yes, I have a, a question about the uh, letter that I had sent to the board on uh, June 4th that was on the agenda setting meeting on june 11th um, i didn't see it on tonight's agenda and i was wondering did the board ever discuss that as a as a group i had a conversation with the superintendent uh this morning but just wondering if the board had any comments or questions about it you, you must have tuned in late because we did discuss it earlier during our let portion of the meeting but dr mast if you'd like to repeat the comments that you made please Yes, I did uh, miss the beginning of the meeting. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Dr. Mast? Yes. Yes, we, we highlighted the some aspects of your plan. First, we, we noted that um, Virginia is, Fairfield County has a plan since they're opening up sooner, and it has some of the um, same suggestions in, in what, what you included in, in your um, plan. Um, we we really valued the fact that your plan suggests leveraging the, the power of technology um, and just what we've learned from this at-home learning experience. We, we do want to do that. Um, in, in addition, we also want to reach out to, um, you know, all, all of the stakeholders as we finalize their plan. So, so we have as... Um, as many perspectives as possible, just informing the work that we're doing moving forward. And thirdly, your suggestion, if we are going back in phases, you know, how to identify the, the students that, that should come back, especially those who could benefit from small group instruction. Thank you, Dr. Mast. Okay, and I also just wanted to comment that uh, I sent the plan, my plan to the Scotch Plains Board of Education first, and uh, 
I subsequently I attended to the State Board of Education and the Commissioner of Education from New Jersey. Uh, and I have not heard back, but I did uh, receive a uh, telephone call that they had, uh, had all received it and the board, State Board of Ed members were going to be discussing it or reviewing it. So I just want to let the, the, the local board have the first opportunity to review it and then if possible the State Board might take some action on it. I'm not sure how much they would uh, incorporate into their plans, but uh, it's possible they might include some of that. Well, thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you for your call. Are there any other calls, Ms. Grubbett? <clears throat> Robin, are there any other calls? Um, if you would just hold on one second to see if any other call. Yes, we do have another call. Just okay. give me a moment. While we're waiting for the caller, Miss Dr. Kolakowski, I have the caller. Okay, go right ahead. Me, please. Mute the computer. Miss <laughs> Clark, if you would, if you would loudly state your name and your address, I'll hold you up to the speaker. Go right sure. ahead. My name is Benicia Clark, and um, my address is 36 Copperfield Road. Um, so, what I have to say is, it's currently 2020 and it's extremely sad that there will be a lot of students who are going through the school district and will not see a representation of themselves in their teachers and i know you spoke about having a lot of things in the pipeline but how do we know that these things will be carried out how do we know that these plans will be carried out and also, what plans do you have for training teachers to be culturally aware over the summer? Are you talking about how to hire teachers of diversity? Benicia? Dr. Mace, you were raising your hand. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I think I think those two points are you know are good ones, and and, and they're certainly recurring. Um, you know, the, the professional development that um, we are doing and we plan to do in the in the near future is certainly going to be responsive to to conversations that we've been recently having regarding um, um, bias training and. Um, and, and, and just just equity in general. It, it isn't brand new work for us, but we certainly recognize that we have we have more work to do, and the work is ongoing. Um, how 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 will you know the community know if we're making progress? You know, as as I said earlier, as, as I see it, is that the best thing that we could do is um, come together in, in this strategic plan. Where, where we develop metrics, where we report out annually, where, where we're really held accountable um, to, to, to the public for bringing forth the, the strategic plan that's collaboratively put in place. But, you know, specifically, we, could, we can, you know, have um, a, a more detailed conversation. I, I would welcome the conversation if you give my office a call, too. Thank you, Dr. Mast. Ms. Broadbent, is she still on the line? No, she was going to take her answer offline. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Benicia, for your call. And our next caller, Robin? If we could just hold a few seconds to see if um, any more calls come in, Dr. Kolakowski. Sure. While we're waiting, I'm just going to review our upcoming meetings. Thank you. Uh, which this is our last one for the current school year. And our next meeting is not until Thursday, August 27th. 
which will be a regular public meeting at 7.30 p.m. for exact 8 o'clock for the public portion. Location to be determined because whether we're going to be live streamed continuing or if we are able to go back to having our live meetings. Dr. Kulikowski, I have another call. Just give me a moment. Sure. And give your name and your address, please. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. My name is Gina Berry. I'm at 214 Terrell Road in Sandwood. So I have two questions. One, I want to kind of piggyback on the last caller, Venetia. I'm not sure if I really got the response that um, I needed to hear. So it's about the staff training. Is there any staff training that would happen during the summer in, um, in preparation for September? for anti-racism and also cultural sensitivity. And then my second question is, just for a point of clarification, black history as well as Hispanic history should not be confined to a single month. Rather, oh, they're not, yeah. it, rather they should be infused into every aspect of the curriculum at all levels of schooling. So are there any plans moving forward that this will happen starting in September at, at any capacity. Thank you. Thank you for your call, Gina. And I was just saying that the Black History Month is publicly noted in February, but yes, it should be included throughout the year. It's just especially recognized then. And the same thing with the Hispanic celebrations. They're also in the springtime. Um, I'm not sure if it's, if it's um, April or May. Um, but yes, in, infused throughout the curriculum. Uh, Dr. Miss, were you going to say something else? Yes, go right ahead. In, in addition, let me take the rest of my call offline. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Robin. Dr. Mast? Yes. Yeah, so, so, so in in addition to what you're saying, Dr. Kulikowski, uh, we we certainly agree that um, that, that Black history should should be celebrate it within the month as as to the, the Hispanic history, but it, it shouldn't be only bounded by that month, that it should be right. integrated, you know, throughout the year and also th throughout the content areas. Um, again, there, there is work that is is on online for this summer. Um, we do know that in our curriculums, we, we do have um, some of these topics, um, we we want to really do an audit, and we really want to um, come together and and expand wh where appropriate. Um, we we talked earlier this evening about how we've been making um, efforts to to diversify our literature that that students read, and and that is both in um, social studies and language art. What we know we need to do is um, really measure where we are and then make a specific plan to, to, um, to grow and extend. And what we also need to do is make sure that we're doing it systemically, that we're just not doing it in some places, that, that the expectations uh, across the grade levels and content areas is very clear. And part of that is making sure that the teachers have the training that they need in cultural sensitivity and bias training that um, that will make the, the curriculum much more responsive to our students' needs. So it seems like the question you wanna know is that work starting immediately? And my the, the answer is yes, it is. Dr. Mass, while you were giving your response, I just looked up National Hispanic Heritage Month extends from September 15th through October 15th. Okay. Hey, anybody else have any comments regarding that? Thank you, Dr. Mast. Thank you for your call. 
That was Gina. Robin, we have our next caller. I do, Dr. Kolakowski. Ma'am, go Hi. ahead. My name is Laura. Yep. Go ahead. Perfect. Hi, my name is Laura Melendez. Um, my address is 45 Elm Avenue in Sandwood. Um, I'm sort of piggybacking of, of Gina's um, question, and I do have a comment. Um, when we talk about what we are using in school throughout the um, throughout the curriculum, I would also love to see extracurriculars included in your audit, things like the music that we are using in band, the place that we are choosing for, for our kids. Um, there is a lot of opportunity there. I have one question about your listening tours. When do you think you're going to wrap them up? And are you going to put out a, a summary for for all parents and, and uh, residents to understand what you've heard and what you will be doing? So, so I, I know that the listening tours that um, members of the Board of Education and myself are a part of, um, it's, it's also part of a group of called Truth, Racial Healing and Transformation. So, so their listening tours um, extend beyond you know, the, the, the work with the school district, though we recognize that the district is a part of the community and therefore there's a big intersection in the work. I, I believe, and other other members, please please embellish my answer that we're planning on listening through the summer. And yes, there there will be a summary, but the the listening tours is really to um, put voices in the the future work that we need to do together as community. Thank you, Dr. Mast. Thank you for your call, Loda. Thank you. Robin, our next caller, please. Dr. Kulikowski, I don't know um, how you're doing on time. Um, there's no calls at this time. I don't know if you are able to wait a few more moments if, to see if anyone else calls in. I'll give a few, few seconds. While we wait, we'll do our good of the order. Does anybody have anything for the good of the order? Mrs. Winkler. Uh, I just want to say that um, a huge thank you to all of our, our staff uh, for the huge amount of work that they were doing to try to make uh, the school year end in a, in a useful way. Um, it was not easy to turn around like on a dime to make uh, education go from what everyone was accustomed to doing on a regular basis to being out of people's homes. Um, I know that uh, a lot of our, I wanna thank our parents. A lot of our parents were, um, were helping their children go through school while also doing their own jobs. A lot of our staff were helping their own children go to school while also trying to do their jobs. Um, it, it was definitely not an easy thing. And I just wanna thank everyone for their, their time and their energy and their patience. Uh, it definitely took a lot of patience. And, um, and on top of that, I want to congratulate all of our, our seniors who graduated this year and um, all of our eighth graders who are moving on up and all of our fourth graders who are moving on up and um, and say that I was happy to be able to cheer on our, our graduating class uh, at the at their car parade the other day, uh, which was so festive and so much fun. Thank you, Mrs. Winkler. Anybody else? Karen? Yes, I just wanted to quickly comment, um, piggybacking on off what Amy was talking about with the virtual end of year uh, celebrations. Um, I personally experienced the Brunner um, evening of recognition and the amount of work that went into it with a cameo from Dr. Mast and all the kids were represented. It was organized. The amount of work that went into it, it was, um, inclusive and memorable for all the kids. So bravo to Brunner for that. Thank you, Karen. Stephanie, you had your hand up. 
Yeah, I was also going to mention the senior car parade. I just want to thank everyone who who planned it. I know, you know, this year, everyone, I think, um, had, you know, losses in terms of what they wanted to celebrate and things did not go, um, you know, as any of us would have wanted, but we we have done the best with with what we could um, in terms of, you know, seven of the nine of us board members were there socially distanced, standing six feet mm -hmm. apart, um, waving and holding signs to all the seniors. And it seemed to me like, um, yeah, <laughs> um, I personally felt like it was very festive and that, you know, we really tried to to do the best for all of our our kids throughout the district moving up, um, given you know the restrictions and the guidelines and, and keeping everyone safe. So congratulations to all the kids who moved up and the seniors. Um, I also just, we mentioned the listening tour. I just wanted to let everyone know that next week we are not going to be having a listening tour. So don't tune in on Facebook. Um, next week is gonna be used as a planning session for the TRHT to plan upcoming listening tours. So just keep your eyes out um, for, you know, upcoming topics that will resume, um, in two weeks. Thank you, Ms. Soriani. Mr. Murray. I just want to thank, um, Dr. Mast in her first full year as superintendent. I think the obstacles that she's had to overcome in her first year have been unprecedented. I think she's handled them, um, extremely well. Um, and we're thankful that she's has a smile on her face every day and that, uh, you know, we are, thankful that she, you know, took the challenge on. So I just wanted to thank you, Dr. Mass, because I think, you know, you've been an inspiration for all of us. You've handled everything with such grace. And, you know, we are fortunate that you, you know, took the position and, and have done what you've done. Thank you. And she's You're still here. here. And she's still thank here. You. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Mass. Thank you. Anybody else have a comment? Mrs. Bauer? Well, really, I was going to ask, are you going to say something about um, the students, the history day? or No, you go right ahead. That's your, that's your thing. <laughs> well, I did just want to bring to everyone's attention that the uh, group that we mentioned previously um, as competing uh, was uh, ended up being ninth in the country with their junior group performance. So that's really a phenomenal thing. Um, and it was on Wrapping Away Injustice. And I'll just mention the students' names, Rachel Lipsky, Sadie Bover, Sanam Mahajan, Sharia Nara. Um, and uh, I think that's just really phenomenal. This is only the second year that they've competed uh, from Terrell Middle School and to be ninth in the country. One of the national finalists was really, really impressive. That was great. Congratulations to the Terrell students. And to Philip Yap is the teacher, a librarian who worked with them. Thank you, Mrs. Bauer. And um, also I watched both the Terrell and Park Middle Schools moving up ceremonies and they are available on YouTube in case you missed it. And I was also one of the people to be at the car parade. And it was very nice to see the decorated cars, the, the happy students, the waving, the honking, and it was just great. So I'm glad we were able to do something for the students now. And then we'll look forward to our other ceremony on July 8th. Okay, any other remarks for the good of the order? Okay, uh, Robin, do we have any callers? Dr. Kolakowski, there are no calls at this time. Okay, then we'll end the public portion of the meeting. And I'm just going to get back to my agenda. Okay. So one last call, remarks for the good of the order. Thank you all for um, participating uh, in our meetings online. It was a crash course in how to you know, be all together, whether you had Zoom experience or Google Meet experience or Ring experience, whatever it was, we put it all together. We made it work. We're learning to mute and unmute. So I thank you all for being so cooperative and participating in spite of all that's gone on. So at this time, um, can I have a motion to adjourn, knowing that we will end this portion and be going into exec for our meeting of the 
superintendent evaluation separately after this. So moved, Winkler. Excuse me, Karen, Karen, this, isn't, this isn't an adjournment that will take place later. This will be um, a At recess. Um, no, uh, move to go into exec. Into exec. So this is a motion to go into exec. So and we moved. Have Second, Suriani. Thank you. There's no discussion about that, I'm sure. Okay, meeting, a meeting uh, tabled until our next portion. Five minutes, please. Thank you. Bye.